See how we oh. snuck up on you like that? You see that, Steven? <laughs> Tricky. Oh. Tricky. All right. We're Friday. now recording. And on the laptop. And on the we laptop. And on we are live. We are so live. We've been live, Michelle, as I've repeated several uh-huh. times. And you can... <laughs> <laughs> you can continue to say salacious things. Fork it. We do it live. Bill Riley over here. The factor. Okay. So, Alex, are you ready to go? Any questions, I'm, comments? I'm ready. He's been ready. This man was born ready. Oh, wait. He was we, born Joshua Topolsky, too, and he changed his name. Can you do it over the music? I always do it wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't we have you do that, Stephen, and... <laughs> well, I'm going to say it's for Skype reasons, and Alex, I'm going to have you say this is Roundabout, because we usually have the guests say that. Oh, so you after Ben says, I'm producer Ben Sanders, just go, this is Roundabout. Yeah, I could say yes. it with, uh, but with enthusiasm. With gusto. Like you want to be gusto. here, even if you have to pretend. This is Roundabout, I guess. As soon as you hear the music start playing, Alex... That's when you say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, you have it right after the music stops. Yeah. But you never know what that is if you've never heard the song before. Or even if you've heard it 83 times, you know. <laughs> All right, Alex, I'll give you a, You need to emulate this. Ready? This is Roundabout. No one will ever do it as well as that. <laughs> as goodly. As swelly. As swelly. Whoa. That's a I professional really radio man from Columbia Broadcasting that was in our studio this here. This is roundabout. There you That's go. Suitable wow. Save it. Save it for the show. You can always patch that <laughs> in. You <laughs> think? All right. All right. I'm ready to You're go, recording guys. recording in both places. Certainly. All right. All right. Everybody's ready, then? Let's do a show, shall we? Shall we? All right. Can we? Here we go. Coming up on Roundabout, a Model T Ford is commemorating a special anniversary in a very momentous way. Literally. Some unlucky folks had to put out a vehicle fire with some pretty unsavory stuff. Find out who and what in just a few minutes. And we'll take you back to the bad old days with a look at some of the worst station wagons ever. So stick around for all this garbage and a dumpster load more. Only on Roundabout. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next purchase. And by Tire Rack. Follow the link on our website to save up to $80. But not waiting for a change, Seattle, Washington, I'm Alex Kirstein from Universe.com. From Los Angeles, California, I'm Michelle Naranjo from Auto Biddle. <laughs> <laughs> From the Roundabout Multiplex in Livonia, Michigan, I'm Stephen J. Ewing from Autoblog.com. From the fine family of Autoline programs, I'm your host, Craig Cole. And I'm producer Ben Sanders. And this is Roundabout. Welcome to Roundabout, episode 83, our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news you may have missed. And so it is once again. We are gathered here. Craig didn't cut me off this time. <laughs> well, someone's still being a son of a bitch about that. But uh, we're here again. I think he exercised a measured pause there. A pregnant pause, even, you could say. Why don't you... Hmm? <laughs> Stephen is depressed. His spirit has been wrung out of him. You can tell. His hair's lying down. Should it normally be spiked, <laughs> Michelle? Yeah. Right. Rub that against the mic so our, our listeners can get a taste of it, so to speak. Hear that, everyone? Some yep. Grease. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the next one to use that. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> you had to boil it for 30 minutes. <laughs> like hair products. And uh, shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, lots of shame. Yeah, well, could be worse. So we are here again on Friday evening. We've, we've gathered around uh, the, the, the folks that we care most about in our lives, and we've, we've come together for you, the listener, to do another, uh, just another great episode of Roundabout. You know? I thought we weren't doing long intros anymore. No, we're not. We're getting, we're, oh, we're getting right into the meat of it. That was a new policy. So you're dragging it out by asking me. I'm just trying to move you along. Have I been dragging this out too long? <laughs> <clears throat> What's the theme? 
as I was going to say, the theme this week is what's old is new again. So we've got this. Oh, of that's why up. you were doing the long intro because we used to do the long, tired intro, you and now we're that. bringing it so it's new you again. You can say that if you want. Mm-hmm. If you need. Okay. But um, yes, so joining us first time ever, very special guest is Alex Kierstein from Hooniverse. That's that's me. Huh? So yeah, we're, we're glad you could Hello. make it yeah. from Seattle, Washington. Maine. Yeah, beautiful, sunny, uncharacteristically sunny mm-hmm. Seattle. It's cool left here. coast. We've got two left coasters here. Mm-hmm. Of course, Joey, you are in Long Beach or wherever other Irvine. Irvine, yes. I'm in Irvine today. Irvine. Irvine. Irvine, California. So, well, thank you guys all for joining us. We've got just a wonderful lineup of stories here. And the first one fits our What's Old is New theme beautifully because some folks are reenacting a very special historical event that happened way back in the year 1911. Mm. Sounds like it was a good year, though. I wasn't there personally, but if That's... I could time travel, I would seriously consider going back to 1911. That's slightly far away. You would go back to 1911. Something about the skimmer hats. I'm not going to lie. You would fit in well in 1911, <laughs> I feel like. What does that mean, Stephen? I... We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway... Um, back in 1911, uh, Ford had just uh, moved into the British market and were selling the Model T. And as a bit of a publicity stunt, the uh, marketing guy that was at the company decided to drive said car to the highest mountain in the British Isles. Well, I say. The highest point in the Cherry land. Ho, which is called Ben Nevis. I don't know why they named it after a guy. I thought that was the name of a golf player. <laughs> Perhaps. But Ben Nevis is evidently the highest peak in the British Isles, the British, the United Kingdom archipelago, if you will, at 4,406 feet. So not so steep. But uh, he drove the car up there, took five days to make the trek to the top of this mountain. We didn't quite have the roads that we have now. It's true. And I imagine there are some mud or ruts or sticky peat bogs or something you'd get trapped in. Did they put off-road or off-terrain tires on it? I think they were they had wooden spoked wheels even so wow. I would guess not. No, have you ever seen any of those of the videos where they they're driving Model T like up and down the creek banks and they're just stock Model Ts? Mm-hmm. Those things were they, they were pretty good on the road. Mm-hmm. The universal car was quite uh, adept at handling that rough terrain. But I digress. Um, so to re- commemorate the occasion, a hundred years later, they uh, they basically got another Model T to the top of the mountain, but they weren't allowed to drive it because of the environmental issues. So, the Model T Club over there basically carried one up part by part and reassembled it at the no. peak of the mountain. Wow. Yeah. I don't, not, I'm not carrying the engine block. Not going to do it. Sorry. Steven, we'll let you handle that. Yeah. I mean, they carried the car and then reassembled it at the top to commemorate the occasion. I mean, great. Somebody drove up there 100 years ago. Awesome. Do you really have to reenact it? Well, if you can't drive up there... <laughs> But do you really even they have to they reenact? They save some effort and just set up a, a Henry Ford style assembly line that just was angled up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Up the mountain. Yeah. Brilliant. So, admittedly, a pretty cool feat, but maybe this should have gone in our segment. Why? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> and look at so we we found this on the Autoblog, autoblog.com, Stephen, your namesake website. Yeah. And they've got this lovely photo of a whole fleet of, of tees, presumably ones from the States, because they've got the appropriate left-hand drive. Mm-hmm. Appropriate. <laughs> relative. It, no, it is appropriate. It's the right hand drive. Anyway. Um, and yeah, it's on the left. Not, so it's not the right hand drive. No, you're just taking me literally, Stephen. <laughs> trying to be punny, Craig. That's so punny. Anyway, so yes, look at the positive camber on those front wheels. Do you believe that? I'm blown away. Mm, apparently not. Yeah. Crickets, crickets. For our audience, why don't you explain what positive camber is? Look at the top of the front wheels. How oh, angled out it is. Start to take your nap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're done here. Next story. <laughs> Did you get to the story? I thought you were just waxing on. Yeah. Pace, pasty powered cars. Alex, we yeah, have an article, so... another UK themed article here. UK and yeah. UP. Because you know, pasties are an Upper Peninsula delicacy here in Michigan. Michigan. Yes. We just got a pasty shop in um, Long Beach. 
Really? They sound disgusting. Yeah. These are a, a oh. big old northern Michigan They're tradition. awesome. They're big in England. I, I love uh, cheese and onion pasties. Mm. Mm. I mean, who doesn't love mm. pastry filled with meat? I exactly. Mean, that's, really, that's true. The, mm. the pinnacle yeah. of British cuisine. But it Is it boiled, really though? <laughs> What's that? Has it been boiled, though? Oh, I'm sure it's boiled before it's put in pastry. I and mean, then, how else can you prepare meat? I don't think there's another. <laughs> one. And does it contain pigeon and or ox heart? Pigeon and ox heart pasties are actually the best kind. I don't know if you've had them, but something about the way it just slides down your gullet is phenomenal. <laughs> well, didn't really they originate guess. in the Midlands too? I understand. I think so. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I'm not really a pasty expert, but I, I do know that these, these scientists in the UK who probably blew through several million pounds worth of grants have discovered that... Pounds money. <laughs> right. But yes, yes. Well, and also probably they consumed a lot of the pasties as well, <laughs> so quite literally. But uh, apparently they're full of oil. I, who, who would know this? You know, they're full of grease and They're oil. an edible Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Less much. sand. Yes. And uh, they, they found a way to extract the oil from stale pasties and uh, create a biodiesel out of it. Hmm. So, Michelle, from your experience, do mm. they deep fry the pasties in the UK? Ask. Just gonna ask. No, they're actually baked. Yeah, you know what? that's what I, I was going to say. I open that link, I just have to tell you, it starts saying downloading malware. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So Hopefully you've got a Mac. The article passed a little initial picture of the pasties but um yeah they're not they're more baked I and mean, it's like flakier it's more like um puff pastry yeah Ooh. and that's how it is here as well and i wondered do they have so much oil because they deep fry them i have i think i've encountered it in the up where a couple places deep fry but it's not very common right because the flaky pastry is actually just butter mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. butter 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 they, they do have a few photos on here, and Ben, how 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 close are these pasties pictured here to the ones that you have experienced? Now I understand you used to work in a coal mine, and you would heat them up on your oil burning lamp on top of a shovel. On the back of my shovel mm -hmm. yep. when it when it was uh, yeah. lunchtime, yeah, I right over my lamp. Did you work in a it's coal blue mine? collar cuisine. It was it wasn't actually a coal mine. That's the one thing okay. you got wrong. It was a copper mine in the Upper Peninsula. Oh, now he's gonna and that was right, right. Was that before or after Vietnam? Uh, During, well, actually, a, a significantly doctor. before. Uh, Vietnam wasn't a country yet. This was the 1860s. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a whale oil land. Well, you, could, you could tell us about what, what it was like in 1911, then. That's right. Well, unless you had died by then. Certainly. Typhoid. It was delicious. <laughs> good year. A good vintage then, as it was. Well, fascinating. I, I can't imagine there, are, there is such an abundance of stale leftover pasties <laughs> that this is a viable source of fuel. I'm sorry. Yeah, th th this seems like, like kind of a reach. I mean, uh, exactly how many pasties can you... See, it seems like you'd be burning a lot more fuel driving around and figuring out which shops... Collecting, <laughs> exactly. Unless they're, they're just blatantly wasteful. Well, we got to cook up 6,000 pasties for today's lunch rush, and oh, we've got like 5,500 left. Darn. I mean, I a better idea. Yeah. Just, just don't put oil, as much oil, into the pasty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's good for employment if we build a pasty pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. It's I like good. that. Straight into my mouth. Let's get pasties for dinner when we're, when we're done. Pasties. Any good pasty places around here? Pastoria, no. isn't it? Always no. Huh? Why don't you... Well, they just put a pasty place in. Well, pasty place pipeline. Yeah. So we'll we'll get on Skype. Alex, I'm sure you can find one, too, in Seattle. Speaking of getting on, this is what we should do. Uh, move on? To the next story. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm hungry, and I'm trying to speed things along. Bored or boring? Yeah, that too. I collect stamps. I should bring my collection in sometime. Mm -hmm. I would love bottle to look caps. at that. Bottle caps as well. I would be honored to look at your bottle cap collection. What's the next story? What car stolen in 1975, Michelle? Recovered. I didn't do it. <laughs> recovered <laughs> on the opposite U.S. coast. Well, it's another one of these stories. Only this time, it was on the East Coast. It, it was well, it was recovered here. Mm. Um, 
Remember Let the record show talking? that she used quotation marks with her fingers. Was I, was I quoting or was I just... I thought, I thought you did. I thought I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Really? Oh. Let's, let's all stop and think about this. Anyway, is, car stolen and then recovered 30-odd years later. What was it, 36 years later? Yeah, That's crazy so, talk. Um, a, a woman who owned a 69 um, Camaro in New Jersey, uh, had it stolen from the post office where her father worked. Why do I have a feeling that it was actually her father's car? Um, <laughs> did you live and, there? <laughs> well, did she visit her father at the post office often? That's yeah. Anyway, so uh, her car, the car was stolen, and it ended up being purchased by a guy in California, and um, not very far from me, and um, on eBay, or eBay, more bad press, and and so I guess um, she's getting the car back. Well, that's and great. And she's going to sell it. <laughs> that's awesome. But <laughs> the poor guy it. that bought it, you know, that's going to suck. It, well, what happens to him? He squandered all this money again, I guess. I mean, what, what, what even happened? Right? I think, in, I don't know. In those cases, that, you know, that insurance policy that eBay has for purchases might cover it. Mm. Not very good. Mm. Um, well, it's still amazing they were able to recover it so many decades later, you know. The law does The long arm of the law. But who was it? It was that reach. guy from um, the pizza place that w decided he wanted his original car back. Oh, oh Papa, Papa John's. John's. Yeah. Right, and they managed to find Better ingredients, car. still getting diarrhea. Papa John's. <laughs> Papa John's is pretty good, actually. Mm, so I'm a bad. fan. I'm a fan. Mm, yeah. I'm lactose intolerant, so I have no idea. What? Oh. Pizza. You've never had alibi pizza. I have had alibi pizza. What's it's that? Good. It is very, it's very superb. Good. It so is superb. center trapper. I have had alibi pizza though. All right, we're having a little Michigan debate here. Yeah. Tell me things that I have or have. Ben say, it's Mario. This is the Michigan the delicacies yes, episode. It should be. <laughs> you that we have. All right. <laughs> Making me hungry. I wish I didn't drop my. Why do you have to record this for a dinner time, guys? I know. I, you know, be, between the disgusting looking pasties and the <laughs> things I can't eat, I'm just so, I, I've been teased with all this food. You're <laughs> salivating, right? Yeah. He's, he's going to have to go eat his, his um, sprouts now. Yeah. <laughs> I had a veggie delight <laughs> sub at lunch. I love sprouts. Yeah. Well, computer glitch. Is, is throwing things back. Computer glitch. <laughs> to say the least, yes. Yeah, this is quite a glitch in uh, Wilmington, California. Which is right around the corner from me. Oh, well, there you go. Um, there was a gas station that had a glitch in its computer system and was selling gasoline for $1.10 a gallon. It's just like it used to be in the Depression, I think. Mm -hmm. And this happened uh. for a, uh, a three-hour period of time on a, on a Sunday morning. And... Uh, you know, because gas prices are like four something a gallon right now, it caused the gas station uh, to lose about twenty one thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Serves them right; they're always mm -hmm. gouging, right? Yeah. No, they don't <laughs> mm -hmm. actually. Um, gas station owners don't make any money. Off they make yeah. like like two or three yeah. cents per gallon. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you have you know a gas station that's pumping twenty million gallons a day, it adds up. It's not <laughs> too bad. But they make their money off the convenience store items, which is why when gas is so high, they do so poorly because not only it's you know selling less gas, but people are you know conserving on their gas usage. Mm -hmm. People are less likely to buy the honey buns or something, their right? Fat coats. Ah. Uh, I don't know. After I see what the what the you know what the how much it costs to fill up my tank, I I, I, I need I need something. I need a candy bar, something to make me feel better. So <laughs> I'm doing my part, you know. Yeah. Help and support hard-working folks, some blue-collar mm -hmm. people. Yeah. They're manufacturing um, a service for people to buy. Um, yeah, so anyway, 21 grand. Yeah, that, that equates 8, to gallons. Yeah, 8,000 gallons of gas during a three-hour time period. And apparently, word was starting to spread, and people were just lining up to get fuel for a buck ten. Weren't the police there? I can there? tell you, this mm -hmm. neighborhood, everyone was on their next tail, like, speak talk phone. <laughs> You know, doing that thing where they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're calling everybody they know. Mm -hmm. do, do they still make those phones? I, mean, yes, I don't do. know. People in my neighborhood have them. When I was in college, many of my friends had them, and they were always, bloop, 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 bloop. and I was like, where are you 
wet. Oh, no, yep. that's the other one. That's the side. No, what was that it one? It sounds like a Fisher Price product, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, when does when does gas last a dollar ten a gallon? It feels like oh, you know God. the nineties. Probably about when I was in high school. In the eighties. Yeah, filling up my S ten. The eighties. No. In high school, for like a couple of months, it was ninety nine cents a gallon, and uh, it was pretty amazing. I actually saw it. I witnessed it go down to like seventy seven cents. Oh my god! For like See, two days. The lowest I ever remember was like the early nineties. I was probably in elementary school. Eighty nine cents was the lowest I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Eighty nine. Wow. I remember I I did a video with a friend of mine our senior year of high school, and we were driving. We were commenting on last year. No, we were commenting <laughs> on how high gas prices were, and you know how everything was so expensive. And we pan up to the the sign above the gas station, and he goes, "Gas is like a dollar forty. Oh my god! <laughs> Outrageous! <laughs> no, I remember being like really upset when it shot up to about a dollar thirty. I was like, "I can't believe this! This is just ridiculous!" I remember when it hit two dollars, people were freaking yeah. out. Oh. Yeah. We and just didn't know we had come in. The sold the word for 20, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So, so, Dutch artist is turning some junk, pretty resourceful guy, turning junk into some pretty attractive art here, Michelle. Into not junk. Really? Into a lot not junk. A lot not junk? This is nice stuff here. <clears throat> He's yeah. from Holland, isn't that weird? Holland. Would you like me to tell her what the story is, or you just want to talk about it? I'd like you to take the reins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <well. laughs> there is a Hollandaise artist. Mm, that's not correct. <laughs> 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 <He's a fake. laughs> he was uh, reading some artwork, and I'm not going to say his name. I can say Deirdrick, but I can't say the rest of it. Mm. Um, and he's making these. Um, wooden Fire cross bell. sculpture. Fire bell. Fire bell. There you go. You said it. And I think they're really nifty looking. I like them. And the catch being, he doesn't repaint any of the pieces of discarded wood that make up the automobile. The art. Yeah. So he's the just art. finding things that are already the right color and then putting them mm -hmm. in the right place? Yep. Yeah, nuts. Like a mosaic. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Awesome. That's pretty pretty excellent. It's ludicrous, in fact. I would hang that. one of these above my commode. I think I think that is that is a pretty <laughs> beautiful piece of art. Take the GT Most golf. Most people buy for golf. above their um, sofa, Alex. That well, is his sofa, Michelle. I'm not most people. <laughs> <laughs> you spend more time on your on your commode, you said. That's where that's where I do my best work. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> Well, I'm not right, going to touch that one. one. <laughs> well, that ties in nicely with our next story, Alex, because um, there were some workers at a prison, a prison in uh, Grafton County, New Hampshire. They were planting some taters out in the field when the Ford Ranger pickup they were driving burst into flames due to a ruptured transmission oil cooler line. And the only thing they had available at the time was a tanker truck a tanker load of liquid cow manure, which they thankfully were able to use to extinguish the flaming truck. Hmm. So, it's a pretty shitty day at the job. Oh. Thanks for the automatic playing video, Mr. Levine. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Irritating. Yes, but... So, yeah, I mean, they... they Because this, this, this tanker, this tank, so several thousand gallons of liquid feces, I would imagine, had a special sprayer nozzle on top. That's how they dispense it in the field. Lovely. So they just back it up <laughs> oh, near this flaming truck, just burning to the ground, and spray it down with poop water. <laughs> so, or, or, poop water. Or uh, stool tea, if you prefer. <laughs> oh. And, uh, yeah, they thankfully extinguished it. But, so, you oh. said it, Michelle. The, um, I can't wait for that truck to show up on eBay. <laughs> no, you're there. Yeah. You there, Michelle? I, I, the article mentioned that uh, the, the prison convicts that were working just ran away when it caught on fire. 
So the guards had to chase them, and they wasted time. Because there was a fire extinguisher in the truck. They could have just used to put it out, you know, nipped it in the bud, so to speak. But everybody started running away. The guards had to corral the prisoners. And then before you know it, oh, truck goes up in smoke. Pause for a second. We lost Michelle. I'm going to add her. Yeah, but we lost her on Skype. You're back. <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting story or, or, or not interesting, Stephen? You be the jury. Uh, a little... You could say it that. It leaves me all a splitter. Oh. Ew. Did they have a champagne there, Ben? Mm, we won't get into that. No, we won't. That story is crap. <laughs> that story is crap. Speaking of crap, yes. Speaking of the crap. Uh, next article is certainly something. And uh, Steve, How do are like you that? pouring a cup of tea, or was that? <laughs> That's a cup of stool tea. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I never do that again. Yeah. Ben, that's your point. Oh my god! It sounds like it Stop sounds that. like Speaking you're boiling frosting or something. Tea. Have you seen the color of a particular Cadillac Escalade? Do tell, Stephen. Yeah, this Escalade, I don't know if you guys have heard of the company, uh, Fab Design, but um, they're famous for making me want to throw up in the <laughs> motor show uh, with their hideous blue SLS AMG. And uh, they've just about done it again with this Escalade that is, while brown, um, perhaps the ugliest Escalade is the Zoom edition I've ever seen. And it's not the Zoom edition, because I think the Zoom is not this. <laughs> um, well, yeah, Fab Design uh, ruined an Escalade. They they did this. My favorite part of it is how the Escalade has like a vertical row of projector beam headlights and running lamps and uh, turn signals and it's a uh, mm-hmm. headlamp cluster. And they put this cover over it that just has holes for each individual light. Mm-hmm. Which so like reducing that. But then below it have put these giant, like, Nissan Juke-style fog lights <laughs> that are just <laughs> ridiculous. And then, of course, you've got enormous chrome wheels, big fender flares, um, and it's just... Uh, it's, it's awful. Is Nine ways to Sunday. Uh, that is Python, actually. Uh, the, the client that they made this for, uh, quote, wanted the car to look like no other Escalade. And they have an interior lined with genuine snake leather mm. and crocodile imitating leather. At least you didn't get the whale leather. Crocodile imitating is my favorite part. Mm-hmm. Like the darts prom brand. Yeah, but <laughs> um, this is just four hundred gallons. Seriously hideous. Oh, and they've got the the um, like the, the the cover over the rear window, the slots, the slats rather. It looks like those little old Mustangs you would have. They put those awful. Yeah, on the side. I don't even know what they were for. Well, no, they'd have them over the back window, or you'd see them on Dodge Daytonas or something. You know what's more? Louvers, yeah. Or the exhaust. Oh, yeah, the exhaust. Quad exhaust. It's quad exhaust vertical, so like two, one on top of the other, pushed way out to the sides of the fenders. This is. It's a piece of work. I would rather. This is a reverse car. I would rather drive a smart. Oh, you need many blinds on the inside. <laughs> Universe has standards, okay? I mean, this, this exceeds them by a lot. Way too much to actually go on the site. Um, you know what I like, actually, about this? The, the no, running I mean, boards? It, it appears that they're cheese graters. I think you can just scrape <laughs> up against a giant wheel of yeah. cheese and have some road nachos. Oh, God, this thing is... It's sad. It, and they didn't even do anything cool under the hood. They just left the normal V8. Well, the guy's this guy, clearly he's a an all show no go kind of person. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say no go. The Escalade isn't a slouch. No, but if you actually care about performance, it's like something. Yeah, at least give it like two thousand horsepower or something. Yeah. Like that. Or at least have a snakeskin valve covers mm. at a minimum. I like the way this man thinks. And I want like a. Oh, I want the steering wheel for my motor. Covered in whale skin. Covered in whale skin. Right. From a very intimate part of the whale. <laughs> you weren't want... here for that episode. That was an early <laughs> no, I, no, but I know that story. Yeah. 
I want the headliner done in bee skin. <laughs> I want the yeah. skins of bees mm. flayed and covering the entire country. Well, we're going to leave that up to you, Stephen, because I don't know where to find bee skin. I'm just saying. So they can get I'm whale... Or not, no, no, no. This is the wrong word. Opposite. <laughs> oh my goodness. We don't need to go any further. <laughs> yeah. So equally awful. We've got an article. So you know, a lot of Americans are averse to station wagons as practical or you know, simple functional vehicles that they are. A lot of Americans don't like them. Um, Which is awful. Europeans adore if you're them. You're an American and you don't like station wagons. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's okay. Some people can just yeah, not getting angry. You no, should be ashamed of yourself. You're not a true American if you don't like station wagons. Well, we've got a roundup. Station wagons. Yeah, exactly. On the Hooniverse, we've got a roundup of some of what you guys, Alex, I'm pointing the finger now, are calling the worst wagons ever produced. Yeah, you know, when, when Jim comes down on an American wagon, you know it has to be particularly bad. And, uh, you know, from reading through his article, you can just, you can feel the pain of generations of, of American children being stuck in the <laughs> back seat on those horrible leather benches <laughs> with no opening rear window. That was the line that got me out of all, mm -hmm. this whole article. The so rear windows. That? That, that beats the Dodge Neon that when you got power windows had cranks in the back. This takes the cake. <laughs> they don't even roll down. How much, God, that is the worst cost cutting ever. But what you have to do is you have to, you have to then immediately think about the great American wagons that have been built. Mm -hmm. The Chevy Celebrity Eurosport wagon. Mm -hmm. The current CPSG wagon, perhaps. Okay. I mean, the, the list of wonderful wagons is much, much longer than the list of bad wagons. It, and even as bad as these, uh, I believe they're G-body wagons. Did I did I get that correct? I don't um, know. They were the downsized ones in the eighties. Everything about the eighties sucked. Awful things were. They they were terrible. But even considering how terrible they were, some nutcase. I found this earlier this, well, late last year. Some nutcase crammed a 454 into the front of one of these bad boys, <laughs> and uh, it was my car of the year nomination on Hooters.com. It was the wallet. It was. Party up front, party in the rear. Nice. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, maybe we can throw a link up to that article. Yeah, we've, we'll put that in the, in the show notes, roundaboutshow.com. And also, that's where you'll be able to find photos of that Escalade you were talking about a minute ago. Look, don't look at it. You yeah. don't want to look at it. It's pretty bad. Yeah, don't. Don't look at either, really, let's be honest. I'm telling you, you don't want to look at it. Okay, the wagons, though, under the hood... That's even more depressing than the lack of roll down rear windows, I think, because right. the, the engine lineup, 200 cubic inch V6, or a 231 cubic inch V6 that delivered 95 to 110 horsepower. Terrible, terrible. Or, 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 or is a 260 diesel V8. I mean, I knew about the Oldsmobile 350 diesel, which which goes down in history as the, the best boat anchor ever made. But I didn't, they made a one-year-only one that was even more awful than that. It's just a, 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 a cornucopia of horrors. Exactly. Uh, 95 to 110 for the V6s. And then, uh, one of which, the Buick V6, was not, did not feature even firing. They took a V8, chopped two cylinders off the end, Made a V6 out of it, that's common to do, saves on architecture costs and engineering and everything, but you've got to do something known as an offset crank pin, because the V8 firing order is different than the V6, and you need to adjust the timing of the cylinders, as the, of the pistons as they're running around, so that it is balanced. They did not do that, they simply chopped two cylinders off and called it good enough, so the engine that's was not nice. even firing and <laughs> ho vibrated horribly. Well, you got to keep in mind, this is old GM we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So anything was possible, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> In including deciding that, that for a transmission for these wonderful wagons, they were going to pull the, uh, the Turbo Hydromatic 200 out of the incredibly reliable lineup of their smallest cars, the Vega <laughs> and the Monza. I mean, brilliant, brilliant thinking. With no, with no modifications, we're going to put it in a heavier vehicle. With a much more torque-rich engine, right? Yes. Well, much being a relative term. Yes. <laughs> 
So yeah, awful, awful wagons, and you can check them out in all their glory at Hooniverse.com. I love how you guys say that. I noticed during that, that whole article discussion, Craig said roundaboutshow.com and Alex said Hooniverse.com. <laughs> just, so that, just so that people wouldn't confuse, you know, that you don't have, that it's not an office building, and it, it's not a book. It's not a magazine. <laughs> it's an actual website. Yeah, but maybe they were thinking of roundaboutshow.gov. Exactly. Or, or .org. Round, or roundaboutshow.com. Yeah, it's There's a... also universe.xxx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't. Mm, oh no, God. no. Michelle, not at the work computer, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so when do you think I brought my computer from home? Oh, oh. that's naughty. Um... <laughs> So, last story in the news portion of the show, we have got what I'm going to call a fanboy face-off here, because Michelle and Alex, you two are oh. going at each other's throats here in regards to the new Beetle that Volkswagen revealed not too long ago at the New York Auto Show. The new, new Beetle. There you go. New, new. That they new. took the word new off of. The 2012. Well, how old was the, the, the last one? It the was new Beetle? Like 50 well, years old, because well. it came out in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it's older than the original that they were still producing. <laughs> But, um, so we've got article on Autoholics, powered by car domain, no less, um, talking about the 2012 VW Beetle, and a variety of folks have done some pretty nice photoshops on VW Vortex, which is a popular forum on the cyber web. But you two are at differing ends of the spectrum here in regards to the Beetle. Alex, you hate it. Michelle, you adore it. Am I right? I wouldn't say adore. I just, I'm such a giver. I want to give Alex a platform for his theory. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it. Duke it out. You know, I, I don't even I don't even want to spend a breath on it because I don't like coming down hard. Well, you've already you failed. <laughs> I want to give it a chance, but, you know, uh, say something nice about it and I'll pick it apart. How about that, Michelle? Okay, okay, I'm looking down the photos. Who wouldn't want a VW that you could make look like a Porsche? Isn't, okay, I'm isn't that every G3 Porsche? The RS one, the one with the orange wheels, and actually, I would drive that. I, I would drive. I, I don't know that I would own it, but I would I would wrap it around a telephone. You wouldn't kick it out of bed. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like the third one down with the white walls. You would. Of course I would. And it's murdered out. It's not murdered out. No? Yeah. It looks dark and matte finish to me. You anyway. could make it dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give it to Aspen Kutcher and he'll, he'll, he'll murder it out for you. Is that what he does? That's what apparently that's what he does. He has a lot of articles about how every SUV he owns is going to murder it out. So. That's what he's doing these days. <laughs> certainly not movies or TV shows, right? Mm. So Michelle, what what do you like about this? Throw something out there for Alex. Well, I, I Debate. think you know that there is a lot of evidence that you know some people have absolutely no taste in cars and they buy Lexuses, right? And then or the Corollas or whatever, and they don't they don't really care what their car smart. looks like. Um, and smart. Uh, and then there's people who actually identify their sort of the quirkiness of their vehicles. I don't know and anybody like that. Um, and they buy funny looking vehicles because they either look like pregnant ants or you know bugs or something like that. Can um, ants get pregnant? A mind I... And <laughs> <laughs> is that so A N T or A U N T? And so <laughs> now we, um, you know, here's. I think this one has a little more personality than the previous. You know, uh, it, it definitely has more of a face going on. It's starting to look like a Wallace and Gromit character. Oh, for sure. And I think, you know, and now whether or not that translates well into the male category who they think is going to buy these, I don't know. But I, I think, it, you know, I think I could see this doing well with women. I'll, I'll give it a couple of pluses. It's not really to my case, but it's still pretty distinctive. You look at it, and it's instantly, you you know, it's a new Beetle. That's a good or a bad thing, depending on what you think. And it also looks a lot different than the outgoing model. It's it's wider. The, the roof isn't a perfect uh, a perfect arc. So it, I think it's it's successful in that it is the same yet different. That's that's hard to do, actually. That's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. That's being that's yeah. me being very political. No. Now tear it apart. Yeah. Now, and now I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that in it. I, I, I just think it, it, um, it doesn't do anything for me. Your wife's calling to say, I want the new Beetle. Yeah, <laughs> we're already getting, getting angry phone calls from, uh, from VWPR. <laughs> They're not even watching. <laughs> Nobody's watching. But yeah. uh, 
I do. I must say, seeing the photos, seeing it at the New York Auto Show, they did a bang up job on the interior. So I really like the design that they did there. But mm -hmm. Not so it's much. It's not the a bad looking car. It's better. It's certainly better than this. Well, yeah, <laughs> we know where Stephen comes from. Stupid. Uh, how's the, the, the dashboard to windshield situation? I remember in the mm. old one that there was like quite a quite a swim platform there. That you could lose your, your firstborn. It was that sort of a that Chrysler cab forward design, yes. like the LH car. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah which is so fifteen feet in front of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is so weird because all modern cars have big dashboards for the, the, the crash, you know crumple zone basically but i'm restoring the 36 ford and literally the windshield is right in front of you if it were fogged up you just wipe with a rag and it's you it's, just lick it you could you could mm. and without straining even you just it's how it is on the mini yeah it's crazy all right guys coming up after the break we uncover a wait deck. you didn't declare a winner of the fanboy face-off i can't pick a winner i can't pick between two perfect choices come on oh they both lose. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Ewing has proclaimed that they both lose. They both lose. <laughs> <laughs> so coming up after the break, we uncover a deadly demon that could be lurking in your car's dashboard. <gasps> we will teach you how not to do a motorcycle burnout, and we'll get to another thrilling installment of Meet Your Roadmates. And what will Ben's stepped reckoner spit out this week? Mm. Who knows? The only way to find out is to stay tuned, so don't you go anywhere or even think about doing something else because we'll be back in just a jiffy. And right now, I would like to speak a little bit about our good friends at Advance Auto Parts. Stephen, have you purchased things from Advance Auto Parts yet? No. I have to say yes. Yes. Yep. Very good. <laughs> what type of articles did you buy for the CRX? I bought... Um... Floor mats? Great. There's all kinds of floor mats at Advance. No, I didn't, because my floor mats and my CRX are the original SI floor mats. So. Well, then you don't want to get them, them damaged. So. Right, so I bought a new set of all weathers. Exactly. See how that works out? Yeah, and now right. we have an exclusive offer for all of our Roundabout Show listeners. And this applies to you as well, Alex, as a Roundabout Show participant. So don't feel that you're excluded. Um, we have a very exclusive, very special offer going on right now. Um, if you go to our website, roundaboutshow.com, and you look on the right-hand sidebar of the page, you will see a button for Advanced. Click on that, and that gives you access to an exclusive offer that is only available through us. So, again, go to our website, roundaboutshow.com, Advanced Auto Parts link in the right-hand sidebar of the page. And right now, they are running a special offer. You can save $10 on orders of $30 or more, $20 on orders exceeding $50, or take $30 off an order of $100 or more. So again, that's 10 off 30, 20 off 50, or 30 off 100. Some pretty good savings. That's a lot of savings, Ben. That is a screaming deal. Yes. And again, once more, the only way to get these deals is to follow the link on our website, roundaboutshow.com. And even if you're not in the market for some for auto parts, they've got all kinds of stuff, repair, or replacement parts, um, aftermarket stuff, pedal covers, floor mats, whatever. Uh, you can still click on the link and show that you support both Roundabout Show and Advance. I love it. And so do I. So we thank Advance for helping us out. That's right. And anyway, with that, it is time to move on to our Blind Spot Story of the Week. When news topics go unnoticed, are underreported, or otherwise fall off the radar, they land in our Blind Spot. And this week, we've got a little, bit of, a little feature about GPS units that... Kill. Dun, dun, dun. GPS, death by GPS is evidently becoming a more common problem okay. as people choose I, to ignore I, common I, sense. I have to I have to speak up about this. All of these stories about death by GPS are to me <laughs> I, I feel bad for these people. Like I'm sorry you You're an idiot. Got stuck in the situation. Yes. But if your nav system is blatantly telling you to go the wrong way. Like, if you're driving through a field, or you're driving through the forest, or, like, if you look where the, this woman that we're going to talk about who was stranded yes. in her, her Chevy Astro van, they're in this, like, national park sort of looking place, not, clearly not on a road. When you get to that point, when do you say to yourself, maybe this system is wrong? And yeah. She wasn't just stranded. She was there seven weeks. Seven Weeks! Weeks! It's two months, nearly two months. These people are so so dependent on the nav systems 
to get around that they're like, well, it, it, it told me to turn right. I have to turn right. Even mm -hmm. if this is a one-way street, I have to turn right. It's got to be correct. It's these people that were just so dependent on this technology now that... Yeah, I blame Apple I, for that. I, yeah. I hate it. It's just, like, people are getting so stupid that they can't even just... It, stay on the Maybe road. They, what, if, what if they wanted to die? Well, well that would be want, an ineffective suicide and they, and they technique to because it took seven to weeks. Car. Well, if they suicide wanted to die, they would have set the Chevy Astro van on fire. It's got a 35-gallon fuel tank. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to go up and smoke mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That, that's a pretty slow way to go. Seven weeks in an Astro van. I, yeah. You know, if I'm going to off myself, I'm going to choose something a little bit faster than right. that. I'm sorry. Maybe in the five-week range? Well, starvation. she didn't die, which is good. <laughs> You know, which is good. Although her husband her is still husband missing. Her husband is still missing, so they kind of... Well, he was in a wheelchair, I understand, and went out to get help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything about a wheelchair. Um, oh, he wasn't? Whoops. I mean, like, I'm glad this woman obviously is all right, but I do not feel yeah. bad for her. Like, I hold... I have no sympathy for her. I'll tell you the only thing. I, I got, like, these weird, like, pings in my stomach of like chills back to the mm. the roundabout road trip mm, when good. we almost ran out of gas in the middle of Wyoming. Was it Wyoming? Oh yeah, it yeah. was Wyoming, all right. It was Wyoming. There was And the GPS there. kept That's right, I was there. Yeah, you were there. And the GPS kept telling us, well, "The gas station's right around the corner. Just take a right." We knew nope. the spot <laughs> it would tell us to go to and then it, oh, redirect. We were we two, yeah. two cycles or We're two using cycles up of precious it. gas. Like, looping back and forth. On this, like, 10-mile loop, too. Yeah. It wasn't and, like, oh, go up to the next road. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, Grant, I, I agree with everything. About Mount, uh, whatchamacallit? Rushmore. The back road from Mount Rushmore. Oh, right. Rushmore. Yes. Yeah, took the dirt road to get to Rushmore. Per the sink lady, Samantha. She's a bitch. Doing. <laughs> I didn't realize you'd named her. That's the Ford <laughs> name. I thought I was sleeping with you on the trip. Ford <laughs> named talking to Samantha. Ford named her. Don't ask me why they called her Samantha. You're about to lose the only woman in your life. <laughs> this, you really want to go down this road, Craig? Yes. He has his mother and his grandmother. <laughs> so this is not about me. This is about everyone here. Roundabout I'm road trip. It's like, very inclusive. We are. But with open arms. My we rule with that arms. sort of thing, though, is, and if we do a road trip that I'm ever on, you will experience this. When you get to a quarter tank, just get gas. And that was the thing. Yeah. Just we we were at we, we were, were at, at a quarter, quarter of a tank. Oh, time, time to get, get gas. That much? Oh. Yeah. Yes. Trying to find the. In the middle of nowhere. Well, you didn't get stranded in your MKT for seven weeks. Almost. almost, almost. <laughs> well, we I had to I, walk granted up to this building. Oh yeah. Like, this was like. Half a mile away, so I got, I'm going to walk over there. There are trucks, semi-trucks. It's like a repair garage for trucks. So I go walking down the road to get there, and nobody's there. So I phoned Ben the number that was on the door and had him call as I was wandering back. I was too despondent to talk to anybody at the time. So, But anyway, going back to the, the story at hand here about this whole outbreak of death by GPS yeah. being made, yes. I have no sympathy for these people. Well, it's just a little common that, sense. Yeah, you're just not thinking your way through this. Well, yeah, and have we have a map in the car. They're not that hard to read. Oh my God, Steven, thank you. Did you know what? I wasn't allowed to have a map on the road trip. I don't understand that. Why? You weren't allowed. Somebody told you you couldn't have a map. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty I'm sure, sure it wasn't me. Like, maps still exist for a reason because it's a tangible thing you can take with you. You don't have to rely on technology for it, and it's correct. It's not going to mess up. It's not going to glitch. You forget about the, the deadly problem that exists with maps, which is, according to that Garmin commercial, sometimes oh, they turn into parts. Mathosaurus, which that is a, you know, <laughs> destroys a small village. It's a giant map. <laughs> Holding them can cause paper cuts or repetitive stress injuries. You don't want maps. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, but... Yeah. No, I will take a map. Ben, weren't we at... We got to the gas station eventually in the MKT. Zero miles of range. Yes. It, was, it wasn't just like, it clicked it wasn't over, like five. No, it like just three, as we pulled three, in, we zero. pulled into the one gas station. It, it clicked right to zero. And we had to wait two hours. Yeah, we had to wait two hours there. for the woman to come in and open it up. Oh, hi. They had a really nice restroom, didn't they, Greg? I mean, oh, God. I, <laughs> I was just going to bring that up, Michelle. Thank you for doing it. The, re 
the restroom there. I used the porta john that was like two blocks away that some construction workers had set up. I had to take it. I held so I walked it. down there. I didn't want to bother the poor construction workers. Brand, this is the nicest porta john <laughs> I've ever been in in my life. This thing was brand freaking new, brand new, never been used. Like sparkles were falling as I entered. <laughs> Took a tinkle and left and said, Ben, go use that one. It's it's right there. It's great. And Ben's like, no, I'm going to be uncomfortable for the next hour and a half and sit here pinching my cheeks me? together. Yes, <laughs> kidding, yes. Nobody's eating the muffins. <laughs> That's funny for a reason nobody will understand. I bought them their blueberry. <laughs> Alex, you have to come on our next road trip. <clears throat> Priceless I I memories. I, I might, next time, if, if I am ever invited on one of these road trips, I think I'm going to plan ahead and bring a seven week supply of masks. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. For the oil, to I would burn advise or, it. I'll bring, I'll bring a <laughs> map. Any, any contingency, really. We could, we could make it into fuel, or we could survive for seven weeks in the woods. I, you know, it's Alex, crack. we have six pounds of gummy bears. That was an impulse buy, I understand. Don't you think we could have gotten fuel out of that somehow eventually? Or diabetes. <laughs> sugar. That's one thing for sure. Oh, that's, that's a good stopping point right there. <laughs> yep, so GPS, don't trust the computers. So, that, you know. Or, or get an all-wheel drive Astro now. Or get an all-wheel drive Astro. Like <laughs> no, no. I, we, can't, we can't advocate that, Alex, no. <laughs> How did they even get that Astro van down in that gully? I mean, that's a piece of work there. Please. Well, you know what it is. Okay. I don't know. You're not actually going anywhere with that? No. Fair enough. Next up, who is ready for a self esteem boost because we are doing another edition of Stupid Car Trick? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Go get it. Go on now. You notice whenever Ben doesn't have the sound effect absolutely ready, he has some little interjection. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Sometimes stop you, just, for time, stop you just, for time. just have to fill time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so then you edit that out. <laughs> but, oh, so we. <laughs> <laughs> Is Droopy Dog gonna show up, Ben? I just got to get the sound effects ready. <laughs> I'm going to piss myself. Oh, good. There's a porn body <laughs> All right, so we got streetfire.net, great site for all kinds of crazy car-related videos. In this case, we've got one about a motorcycle guy doing a burnout. This is how not to do a motorcycle burnout because the guy nearly burns himself to death. Yeah, this is uh, truly a burnout. Very, Truly a burnout. Literally, I think you could say. L literally a burnout. <laughs> I love that people are pouring their sodas <laughs> and their beers and their waters all over the motorcycle just to try and put out this there fire. You know, I gotta say, there is more douchebaggery going on here <laughs> than, like, a day-long marathon of Jersey Shore. I mean, I'm sorry, but this sort of thing brings out the south look at, in me. Uh, very genteel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at, look at... All the energy drinks, cut off shirts. It's like, what the? Go get yourself a nice button up with a collar. So, what exactly happens here, Craig? I oh, already explained it. We can actually move video. on. The dude who set himself on fire just looks around and everyone goes, <laughs> I know. Like, yes, I've done it. He cheated death. He's like Evil Knievel. I don't oh. think he's like Evil Knievel at all. Michelle, how does this make you feel? All fired up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Well played. laughs> and Alex, what about you? I mean, this, this makes me want to go get a motorcycle. Does it? That's and, and an asbestos suit. God, he sounds like Josh Topolsky from Endgame. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We just have to stop this now. You are what are you going to do about it, Craig? And they can change? There's not much I can do, Michelle, frankly. Go change <laughs> So if I meet him in real life, is, is the world going to wake up? It's going to be the rapture. So I, I think so. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow. You'll meet Josh Dabolsky. It's a family. AOL family. 
I'm the sorry, the what? The AOL family? The owl? Oh, yeah. Well, not I mean, anymore. I've, I've heard of the AOL. Yes. I believe he left in Gadget. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. he did, yes. I'm just saying. You've got in Gadget. <laughs> Is it, do you need a topical cream for that? I've, or? Heard, of, I've heard of the AOL though. Yeah. So yeah, don't do a burnout on your motorcycle if it's leaking gasoline, because presumably it will catch on fire. <laughs> Lesson learned. And now it's time for Highway Hearsay. Another throwback. It's our theme. That's the closest you're ever going to get to headbanging. Hey, open wall. Seizing. <laughs> Highway Hearsay is all about what we've seen out on the road from weird sightings to the stupid things people do. And I had a, a bit of a curious encounter over the weekend. Did you? I was out and about. It was, it was the weekend I'm allowed out. And <laughs> I was driving and I saw, managed to snap a photo of it, stopped at a light, a lovely orange Mazda, Mazda Speed Protégé. I love that car. I'm su not surprised. But um, orange Mazda Protégé. And I thought, that looks funny. So I took a picture and very curious custom plate, which if you click on the link, Craig, you'll be able to see, spells out, pull me over. Pull me over. Pull me over. Pull me over. But you get the idea. Pull me over. Wow. I think I that might have just become a sound drop. I'm sorry, the Mazda Speed Protégé was a very cool little car. That's what I want to talk about. They're, yeah. they're there, they're mm -hmm. beautifully balanced front drive. Like, they're honestly, the, I, I hope the reason why you took this picture wasn't, oh, look at that weird plate. It was, whoa, look at that really oh, good-looking Mazda Speed Protégé. It wasn't that great, like though. Stephen and I Do you like it because it's orange, orange, Michelle? Oh, um, Michelle what? Can I come if I bring beef jerky? Yes. Teriyaki beef jerky. No dairy products. No, no, just beef jerky. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get in our, our orange speed protege and drive It's 160 off. horsepower from a turbo four. This was like the mid 2000s. The folk, SBT folks had 170 from a naturally aspirated four of the same displacement. Yeah, and this one has a wing. <laughs> oh, great, I can iron my shirts. <laughs> this was like the, the predecessor to the Mazda Speed 3, though. So you like this one better. It's retro. It fits our, you know, what's always like new again theme. Car. I like the Speed 3, though. I like the, the Speed Protégé. Alex, what's the West Coast consensus on this vehicle? Well, I like orange. There's not enough mm -hmm. orange cars out there. Why did the orange have the guy with the muscle cars? Uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Did I forget orange. to mention that it has a wing? <laughs> don't you guys it find the crazy. license plate a little provocative, though? We, we don't, don't care about the actually... license plate anymore. We're talking about the car crash. Exactly. <laughs> You know, the thing The thing was post-muscle car, and it came in orange. And you could get a thing with a wing. Mm -hmm. A thing with a wing. I, so I or loved it. Orange is sort of starting to come back, though. When Ford launched the Edge, they launched it in that, that burnt orange, orange color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish we were steadfastly refusing to talk about bicycles. Even the wheels are cool. Like, they're, they're good aftermarket wheels. I don't care for the tint job or the, the, the aftermarket tail lamp covers, but not a tint thing. It's a good-looking car. No, I'm not a tint fan. Why? I don't know. I just, if the windows, if they weren't tinted from the factory, they shouldn't have been tinted. Wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. mm, I disagree. Mm. God I mean, disagrees with you. Those are the ones that are frosted at the top. They go frosted. <laughs> yeah. Like the the reflective, like, one way. <laughs> those are yeah. nice, too. Like but, the mirror. Yeah. yeah. That's extra uh, illegal. How many times do you think this guy... Okay, so I want to ask about the plate. How many times would you guys bet he's been pulled over because of the plate? Probably not. Surprisingly never. less than you think. Probably not. It's like hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. Probably he, he has <laughs> never gotten a speed. It's probably trafficking people right there. I That's probably evidence you could use in court. You know what? I have, been, I have been pulled over for uh, more than once. Seriously. is Because a lot of the, the press cards have odd license plates on them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, for a long time, I don't know if this is still true, but the Michigan Police Department had issues uh, running the Illinois manufacturer plates that come in on some of the cars. And I had, I just, seriously, more than once, um, driving on the highway, and I had a cop behind me. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but he was just trying to run the plate on the car Trolling. and couldn't, so pulled me over because of it. <laughs> well, here's a fun story. Coming home from my friend's house one night, and... Um, 
in, through downtown Romeo. Um, cop pulls me over. I'm driving a Mazda 3. Wasn't doing anything wrong. He's like, you, you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, I have no idea. And he's like, you ran that red light back there. I'm like, I didn't, but okay. It's because the car had California plates on it. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Right, Michelle? They're out to it, get us all. You are simple, Craig. <laughs> simple you, have, you have no idea how many times she has been pulled over with California plates. I can only imagine. Right now I'm driving around Michigan plate. Well, wow. Michigan one? That's different. I, I am. You no, once, you know, when we don't have in the garage. <laughs> Save it for next week. Collect exactly. those impressions is she up. She on next week? She is. Yeah, I believe so. But I Michelle, you also had a highway. Was. You had a highway here, say. I do. Last week when I was getting ready to leave work, I looked at Sigalert.com, which is our little map that has, you know, it's like a Google Earth map that has all the speed limits of the freeways between, you know, going all over Southern California. And they have this overlay of um, cameras so you can actually look at, you know, the live traffic that's, um, you know, going in a particular direction. And I looked at um, the traffic going north towards Long Beach and at one of the locations where this camera was, it was um, a little bit odd looking. And um, I, I don't see what's odd about it. It's totally normal. To <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just going fast enough to make enough downforce to, to drive along the ceiling. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that is strange. Hmm. Upside down. Yeah. Upside down. It's upside down. Now, was the camera facing the correct direction? It wasn't like it broke off and was dangling facing the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, it was actually facing the correct direction. And then um, I, I actually, um, when I got to that intersection, I went ahead and decided I would face the end of the world. Um, <laughs> I just, the rapture. I just took a twit, so twit pick of the next picture there. Um, I took a picture of it and twit picked it. Which apparently I made some people sick to their stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. How do you like it? It's a home danger. There you go. Good eye, Michelle, and catching that little little guy there. Where he got away, before the internet sucked him up. So, who is ready for some Meet Your Roadmates? I know I am. Me. So enthusiastic. Who's driving that Jeep Liberty next to you? Why do Nissan Sentra owners always work at Coney Island? Each week, Meet Your Roadmates <laughs> answers these burning questions and more. Ben, what is our first vehicle this week? As you know, every week we randomly choose vehicles via our supercomputer. Is it a Cray supercomputer? A what? Cray. Cray? I think that's the Cray. Cray. You don't... Oh my gosh, Craig, do you know something that Ben doesn't? Uh, he knows quite Many a lot things. that I do not. I was kidding. Craig, supercomputer, manufactured in Seattle. Hey, Whoa! Hey, hey, hey Craig. What? <laughs> Gotta represent or something. Anyway. All right, I'll start this baby up. It always takes a few minutes, so go ahead and get a Coke or whatever. Mm, God damn it. Again? Yes. Yeah, Got to give it a kick sometimes. There we go. Oh, the fumes. But you get used to it. Oh, my God. I can barely move my arm as I did so many. <laughs> Sorry. Anchor man. What have we got here, Ben? <laughs> All right. Number one. Let's see what it is. Ah. A 1986 VW Vanagon Synchro. VW Vanagon. Vanagon. Whatever. Vanagon with the wind. I ain't driving this thing. So, who would drive a 1986 VW Vanagon? Vanagon? White, su white, Vanagon? white supremacists from rural Michigan, no, members of the much. Michigan okay, militia. So it's awful. This vehicle is in northwest Connecticut. It's the Vanagon. I can tell you this much. Whoever owns it smokes so much pot. <laughs> Wait, is Connecticut big enough to actually have corners? Sort of. I don't know. Yeah. I'm on the West Coast. I have no idea. Big sky country. I'm it saying. is. They just sort of the whole state is separated into quadrants. So the, and they're they're given numbers. There's one, two, three, and four. Like counties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> kind of. So let's go over some of the specs on this beast. All wheel drive, Volkswagen, Vanagon, Synchro, asking thirty six hundred bucks. It's an eighty six. It's got a rebuilt transmission at a. 
830 miles, pretty specific. Ooh, ooh, we're told that it's well cared for and runs good. <laughs> 215,000 miles on it. New front brakes, pads, and discs. New tires have all service I, records and title. I don't know if runs good is going to be the right description. I think walks sort okay. of slowly. <laughs> I, it's an ambler. As a general rule, I don't trust any Craigslist ad if the person only knows how to type in caps lock. Right. <laughs> They're shouting at you. They want you to buy it. So who hey, hey. Alex, who would drive a nineteen eighty six VW Vanagon Synchro? Well, you know, I I think maybe a Canadian. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for a Canadian. Okay. And I, I say that because one of our lovely contributors and editors is Canadian and loves Volkswagen inexplicably. I don't understand, but he would he's actually gonna be guilty. I mean, I'd be jealous that, that we have been talking about this because mm -hmm. he, he would have been very excited about it. I can imagine. Michelle, who do you think would drive this thing? You know, you know that guy that saw the two, the double rainbow? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the Yankee version of him. Because, I mean, because I just looked up Colebrook, Connecticut, and it is surrounded by the Wyandotte State Forest, Mohawk State Forest, Hagnut State Forest, Nipog State Forest, People State Forest, Algonquin State Forest, Ender State Forest, like all the way around. It's just State Forest because it's at the top of Connecticut by... Uh, Massachusetts. So this is a, like a total hippie. So you would drive one, you're saying? <laughs> I, I don't live in the... I live in urban... But you're a hippie, age. right? Ben always says... I ben says... says. <laughs> but he's mad at me. Ben. <laughs> say Ben. Uh, I, I say it with affection. I say it with scorn and oh, malice. You, ben. <laughs> uh. Oh, who wants to do our next vehicle? We haven't gotten to Steven yet. Oh. <laughs> I already said they, they smoke a lot of pot. Okay, and I said the white supremacist. So there you go. Next vehicle, Ben. All right, I shall pick another one from our supercomputer. Jackpot! <laughs> yeah, that's something all right. Next vehicle. <laughs> we have a 1975... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Zach exactly. drives this vehicle. Done. 1975 Bronco. Let's move on. Zach Bowman drives. 75 Is it really Bronco. that easy? Yes. One ton axles, fuel injected, 300 straight six, no less. C6 transmission, big ass tires, located in Palmer, no, outside of Anchorage. Anchorage. Tires as shown on picture included. Wow. Bowman. Yeah, the Zach Bowman drives this car. What's next, Ben? <laughs> well, that did that. Do you have anything else to interject, Alex? No, I mean, that is so sad. That is so Zach. Maybe with a little bit of Jeff Ross, but mostly Zach Bowman. But mostly Zach. All right. Fair enough. If, if Zach and Jeff had a baby. Ooh. Little. Uh, 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 <clears throat> wave of nausea. <laughs> That's what that is. Oh, All right. Yeah, right. Lunch is coming up a little bit. <laughs> All right. I'll pick another one. Next. Ah, we're moving up in time. It seems we have a 1991 Toyota Truggy. This looks capable. Well, Michelle would drive this. <laughs> I would. Listen, Michelle listen. would totally drive this, and I would absolutely ride with her. It's something all right. Okay, let's go over the specs here. $13,500 in Micronesia. Didn't know they no had less. room there to drive vehicles, but hey, who am I to judge? that tiny. I want to see one of their cars are for sale on Micronesia Craigslist. God, this is awesome. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. We should, we should focus on the Truggy. What's Truggy? What, what, is, what is that? It sounds like a racial slur of some stripe. <laughs> but um, I'm not certain. Anyway. It's a really large troll. Yes. <laughs> 91 Toyota Hilux 4x4 with the V-Type 6-cylinder engine. Full exterior steel cage and body with a new suspension. Missing links front with all pro springs. Front is mounted out 12, moved out 12 inches. Fully rebuilt front and rear axles with 410 gears and locker in the rear. 38 inch bogger tires with 15 by 12 trail ready bead locks. Cold AC, new compact disc player. I know who's going to drive this. Hmm. I know. Who? Professional zombie hunter. Hmm. <laughs> Very good choice. That's hard to beat. Steven, you said Michelle. Michelle would drive this. Michelle, who would drive this besides you? Uh, or, a zombie um, hunt? or a zombie hunting Michelle. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Michelle the zombie slayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. A 
Okay, Alex, I gave in and I looked at the other cars for sale in my dream job. <laughs> There's someone with a 2010 3, uh, 370Z Nismo. Ooh. I mean, there's, it, it looks like all of our cars. It's a Corolla, Audi, A4, mm. Accord. Now, are these U.S. dollars or Micronesian pesetas or something? Well, Guam is a, a, what do they call it, right? Protectorate or US. something? Yeah, so don't they use yeah. dollars? Sure, I have no idea. Probably. But yeah, this is, some, I have no idea who would drive this. A, a South Pacific version of Bowman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever that would look like. Oh, it's Michelle. Michelle drives it. Okay. Michelle, Michelle, she wins. Michelle oh, wins. Oh. She gonna drive it up the side <laughs> of the dune. She gonna drive it. She gonna Ooh, drive I'm getting it. excited, y'all. We're getting she a gonna, bonus. She gonna drive it good. Alright, then. What's our last option here? Alright, our last one is a bonus round. Do this we have is a bonus round sound effect? Um... Do, 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 do. There, that part. That part's the bonus. Okay. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure that's a lie. So I will read you a description of a real living human being, and mm -hmm. you will tell me what that person drives. So this is meet your roadmates in reverse. You understand Ooh. how that works? Oh, this is awkward. Have you ever played this, one, this version of the game? Oh. It's all of our first time. It's okay. Then. No, hey, no, no I, we played no, it before, actually. Know. But <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So this actually comes from, I believe, an eBay post. And this is what the person writes. I will leave out the, the car because it is mentioned. This auction prize is not simply about a car, but about a woman in a car. A woman who is selling the opportunity to accompany her on a four-night five-day adventure on a Le Mans tour in her blank. A woman who many would easily, would say easily earns the adjectives attributable to any suitable bidder of this auction. The journey begins on Thursday morning with an early departure from Folkestone, UK to Calais, France via Eurotunnel. At Calais, you, the damsel, and 25 other cars will form a convoy driving all day with a leisurely lunch break to arrive at your magnificent hotel in the Loire Valley. Spending a chill-out day on Friday, you will explore the Loire Valley in convoy visiting nearby Chateau... Shut up. French I'm Marcus. <laughs> French in high school. I don't know. I already have my answer. <clears throat> okay. Well, you get I the think, idea. I think we've heard you get the idea. Who would... What would she drive? What would this woman drive? Lexus SC430. Okay. In red, For the though. stylish whore. <laughs> uh, Alex, yeah, it's, a, it's a red Lexus SC. Alex, I, you know I'm gonna say Bristol Blenheim because uh, she probably thinks the bomber she's plane, active, but in reality, uh, not so much. Michelle, Shay? I'm gonna say the cross cabriolet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, since she's going to Le Mans, I'm gonna say Pontiac Le Mans. About 1989. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Dan? The answer is A, 2009 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. Sorry. She's a classy call girl. And we were all wrong. So congratulations. Does that mean I win? Yeah. Well, Ben takes home good the grand on me. prize of helping me put all this stuff away when we're done. Oh. Well. Well, there you go. I, I put the picture of the nice young lady in the... <laughs> Moderately young lady. <laughs> in the document. Okay. Well, very good. You know what, guys? I think we've got ourselves a show here. That was awesome. a show. That yeah. was, that, that's we're, about, we're just about at full circle here in the roundabout. We're done. Yeah. All right, bye. Yeah, goodbye. Good yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks, everyone. <laughs> no, great job, everyone. Um, thank you for joining thanks, us. Thanks, teacher. <laughs> If there's an awkward pause, that's a great way to fill it, then. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So, Stephen J. Ewing from Autoblog.com. That's me. You're the fleet manager. I am. You get everyone that works at the Autoblog. You facilitate press vehicles for them. I do. That's a pretty monumental I responsibility. You write stuff. You I edit stuff, I wasn't too. cutting you short, Stephen. He's a programmer. The word, <laughs> the word editor is in my, my title as well. But your biggest responsibility. 
getting them all damn cars. Let me do a damn fine job of it. Because there are always reviews coming up on me. Thank you. <laughs> Alex Kirsch. Did you say Kirstein? Kirstein. <laughs> or, or I would. I would be. Okay, close enough. From Hooniverse. Hooniverse.com. Yes. We're glad you, this is your first time in the roundabout, and I'm tempted to ask you if you enjoyed yourself or not, but I'm afraid you might be honest on the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, please don't ask me that. I, I don't, you, I'm, I'm afraid of what I'll say. <laughs> That's what he said about the VW bus. That's Ben's ego. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, this foghorn will answer your question. <laughs> 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 so, well, thank you for taking your time out of your day to join us. We do appreciate it, Alex. Well, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll have to do it again, Josh. Uh, Alex. Okay. Yeah. Whoever I am. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you've also, you'd like to plug your Facebook page for Hooniverse? Yeah, it's um, facebook.com slash Hooniverse. But that, of course, as soon as you know how to spell Hooniverse, if, uh, hopefully you'll give us some assistance with that on the Roundabout website. Oh, definitely. We will, we will put the appropriate link next Correct to your name. Spelling. Exactly. Awesome. That is that is what we do best here at Rondo. But it is Hoon H O O N Iverse. However you spell Iverse. it. Iverse. Iverse. We're averse to having it spelled any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Iverse. the site. Follow us on Facebook, and uh, that's another way to get our wonderful, fringy content. And on Twitter, you are at the Hooniverse. The Hooniverse. Yes. Good to know. Good to know. Well, thank you. Thanks again, Alex, for joining us. We do appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Michelle, Joey Naranjo. Cranky. Are you guys going to have a moment? Joining us again from the Auto Bytel headquarters, the epicenter, really. Absolutely. It's actually the... Um, In Irvine, California. The International and Intergalactic Headquarters. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. So the folks in Andromeda would, would call into Irvine here? Yes, mm. Absolutely. Fascinating. You guys are still, I understand, working on relaunching the Autobytel website. How's that going? It's uh, a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I was at work till like 15 last night at my desk. Ouch. Yeah. But you've got the ball chair. I That's got to help. <laughs> <laughs> this business has its perks, let me tell you. <laughs> I had to bring my own ball chair. Oh, that's a shame. Gosh dang it. Well, once the site relaunches, you start bringing some booty bucks in, you can get them for everybody then. Absolutely. You're the managing editor at autobytel.com. I, I am indeed. So, I am indeed. And um, did you want to know what I was working on? If you, if you care so to share. Well, actually, this Sunday, you're going to laugh. Don't laugh at me, please. Mm -hmm. I have to... Please don't laugh at me. I have, I have to speak at a self-esteem day for women because we actually have a favorite organization we work with here called uh, Working Wardrobes. It's workingwardrobes.org, and they um, get women that are in transitional housing, getting out of prison, all that stuff, mm. um, and back into the workplace and give them clothing and job interview tips and all this stuff. And so I'm going to speak to that well, on that's Sunday. Great, Michelle. I know. Helping I people like, out. I have my own self-esteem, and I'm going to go talk to these people who... I can't do it. I'm not good enough. <laughs> it's okay, oh, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Michelle. As always, it has been a joy. Thank you, Craig. And last but not least, Benjamin Colonel Sanders. For oh, yeah. th thank you for doing the technical side of things and getting the podcast edited and posted in a reasonable time. Always a pleasure. And the fans should thank you for that as well. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so wrapping things up. Thank oh, ben. is this Southern Day or I something? I like it. <laughs> Anything that uses humdinger is good in my book. Before we go, uh, we've got a, a little contest that's going on right now. Jimmy well, Stewart. about going to start, right? Yes. It's just starting. This is the first announcement of it. Jimmy Stewart, a.k.a. Roab Mr. Stewart on Twitter, or Rich Henyon on Facebook, is giving away a special prize to Roundabout fans. And we're going to have more info on that in coming episodes, but be, be aware. He's going to be asking you to post something, I believe it was on the Roundabout page on Facebook, right? Correct. So be aware. We'll have more details in the future coming up, but he is personally giving something away to the Roundabout community. 
So if it's a bad thing, it's just kind although, of you may want to end Although it. I think if you pay attention to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash roundabout show. That's it. Forward slash roundabout show. <clears throat> Facebook.com forward slash roundabout show. You probably will get in on the action sooner rather than later as he posts it in the middle of the week sometimes. So keep your eyes peeled as it were. Check out that. And with that, you can watch Roundabout Live every Friday evening starting at 6 30 p.m. Eastern time. That is three. I'm watching it live back. now. You're Whoa. doing you're not just watching, you're doing it, Ben. And don't I'm forget to check out the rest of the Autoline family of fine programs, including Autoline Detroit, Autoline After Hours, and of course Autoline Daily my baby. If you, have a, if you have a question or comment you, you want addressed, you can always get in touch with us on our ROAB hotline, and the number to call is 1559-ROAB-411, that's R-O-A-B-411. In number numbers, that is 1559-762-2411. We appreciate hearing from you on our Google Voice number, so feel free to drop us a line. If you want to stay in touch with us, uh, you can do that at Twitter. It's twitter.com slash roundaboutshow. Or, of course, Facebook, as Ben mentioned a few minutes ago, facebook.com slash roundaboutshow. We appreciate Maybe. it. <laughs> we appreciate it if you give us a like, as always. And if you never want to miss an action-packed episode, and who doesn't, you can subscribe to Roundabout on iTunes or the Zoom marketplace like me and Alex do. And with that, thanks to all of you out there listening. Please join us again next week as we circle the roundabout, and we'll talk to you then. One that is the worst. Why, why would you have that noise? As like he recorded it when he was on the toilet the other day. You know, I was thinking about using this one because I didn't get to it in time for our, wait, our septic you, tank story. Did you actually record it while you were on the toilet? <laughs> wait, again. <laughs> Michelle is like, you're aghast or something. When, when did you record these? When? <laughs> oh, That's just equipment falling out. <laughs> ben had a champagne stool, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Does that feel better, Michelle? <laughs> Did you have a hidden microphone when I was there? <laughs> the ball chair really works your digestive system, I right? I can't. Keeps it in shape. <laughs> How many do you have? <laughs> this is the same ones repeated. You know what that is? That's someone dumping mayonnaise on the concrete. <laughs> I a, used it. A five-gallon tub of yeah. heavy-duty mayonnaise just labeling it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I don't need dinner now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you're going to save your pasty for later. For the start of the finish, I've, I've been completely disgusted. Well, we got to thank our chatters on that. He's note. not only lactose intolerant, he's too averse. <laughs> I don't like because who. He, that's because that? unlike Whoever. these two, he's a grown-up. Oh. Well. Well. He's being a son of a bitch. No offense. <laughs> hmm, someone doesn't want to come on the show again. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, not you. Not you. Talking to the asshole here across the table. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and you're never going to find out. Right right here. Steven and Michelle show. Steven and Michelle show. Hey, Dan, can I show you something? Yes. Let me put your. F- oh, is it oh, a little bit lower? Oh, I was going to ask you about this, but I decided not to. This is Michelle's miniature horse. Oh, with the horse's ass. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, we don't. We can't fit a mini horse in the van. Hey, Michelle. She's only twenty-eight inches tall. She's smaller than Eric's dog. A, Michelle. Why? <laughs> and B. The county hasn't shut you down for having hoarding animals. And C, don't feed her any Beano. No. <laughs> we need some great recording, <laughs> let, let me just thank our chatters really quick here before they all leave. And by the way, Alex, if you've got to go, feel free. Now is the time. Run if Ben's can. sound effects have worked it out of you, so to speak. I should probably run too because I've got a. I think that meeting I left since coming to this is still going on. Uh oh. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. Great job. Great job. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'd love to do it again sometime. All right, we'll you're welcome back panic. anytime. Yeah. Bye, Michelle. Bye, thank Skype you. people. Bye, Alex. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Craigie. Bye, So, thank Bye. our chatters. We got Charles Chrome, Cran Breaking Luke. Gorski C. He stuck around the whole show. Imagine that. Wow. Jonathan Brown is back. Mr. JB. 
Glad you could make it. Mud Monster, Roab, Mr. Stewart is here. And Roundabout 692, whoever that is. You can change your name when you log in. Mm, yeah, but doo doot, Rich. So, yeah. And if any, so all right, for you folks who stuck around, you can hear why I had those sound effects. I think this is at least the uh, the production they were used in. So enjoy. Do you smell that? Yeah. No, it's not me. It's the company aroma of my scent hair freshener, but patent pending safety sink technology. Using a proprietary blend of fragrances and atomized and Safe scent hair freshener to keep you awake and alert. They're available in three intensity levels. I got a dumpster, truck stop restroom, and nursing home. A <laughs> maximum strength formula. So, choke back uh, the driving with safe uh, scent hair fresheners. <coughs> Whoa, throw up a little air. Steven's not amused. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty awesome. Have you heard our fake commercials? I've heard a few of them, yeah. Did you but hear the, the... My favorite is the, the Quicksilver like Motorola. the ones at the end of... Is when you play You Don't Know Jack on the computer. Those are the best. Hmm. I don't know that one. The Nora. He was backwards. Today's broadcast of Roundabout is brought to you in part by... Oh, hi. Jimmy Stewart here for Quicksilver. Oh, I've heard this one. So but is your car live? I don't. I don't. I don't like the whole Jimmy Stewart thing. What about Confederated Fuels? I've heard that. No. Mm. Safety skid brakes. That's a good one. Skid to safety. I don't think so. Did you hear that? It's accompanying sound of my safety skid brakes with pending safety squeal technology. During dangerous panic maneuvers, safety squeal warns other motorists and innocent bystanders to brace for impact. <laughs> when the wheels lock up, you know they're stopping with maximum power. And the loud pedal pulsation lets you know they're working. Think of it as a soothing massage for your tootsies. Remember, you can stop on a dime or you can do it for less with safety skid brakes. Okay, kids, I'm coming through. <laughs> Not amused. <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly is a thing. He's just a hard, hard nut. Well, that's guy. certainly a fake ad, isn't it? <laughs> this was our Halloween ad. Oh. Blah. I don't want to stuff your blood. Oh, no. Don't be frightened. It's your old pal, Jimmy Stewart, getting into character for All Hallows Eve. I want to tell you about Rocky Willie and the Section you know, they're just as many kids dressing up as goblins these days. You know, TV's favorite joke, they're playing Boom Boom Washington. And if you don't want pink fridge, you better buy the best, like Annie Mabel's saltwater tap. Kids love it. After all, it's, it's made with real rock salt. Or, or pick up a Halloween sample with all your favorites like sawdust poppers and old rusty candy loop fish and horrible, horrible popcorn balls to make a little lady down the street. Well, this world is really special. I know it's coming. It's still funny. The handiest stuff on, on the block. And, uh, you better buy extra because the kitties will be fatty for seconds. Well, if you'll excuse me, uh, I, I think it's time to give old Mrs. Stewart a break. Yep, mm -hmm. that happened too. That's exactly what that was. All right, I think I think Luke wanted to uh, hear one that Ben had done, and you know I'm not one to turn to down a fan. Oh, play the roundabout rear view song. Uh, that one's we'll so get to good. it in a minute. Play this. Play the one you want. I ain't seen you quiet down now. I'm trying to hear my Leonard Skinner. Oh, hey. You represents getting out of here. Shucks, it's all them chickens in the back seat. They's got to learn to shut the f*** up. No, no, no need to get your britches in a bind. Try these. Stand. <laughs> it's Grandpa Perkins with Federated Barrett Front. Guaranteed to hitch down your toughest chicken-related emergencies. Just scrap that coop down to the roof and you'll be enjoying Knox County's finest FM radio in no time. That's fine for them, but what about old Rufus here? <laughs> no problem. Grab his confederated twine can strap down most 
anything to the outside of your own vehicle. There you go. You're going to love that bump of bottle. Thank you kindly. Now I've got room on the front seat for my sturdy pack of netty lights. Ain't nothing twine can't do. That's right. Just remember that name. Grandpa Wagon's Confederated Baby Twine. Go on now. Get yourself some. <laughs> I got myself some. <laughs> That's fantastic. That was funnier than I remembered. <laughs> Not that funny. <laughs> that is fantastic. What's that? For sure. I got me some. I got me some. I, I what forgot about, about that. Rufus here to do the dog. <laughs> that's, that's good. Oh, boy. You got to play the, you wanted to hear the highway. No. Uh, Not about rear view. When yeah. I go a motoring in my old jalopy, I think of all the picnics those Joes show us sloppy. But more than anything, I can't forget you. Here's another edition of Roundabout Review. That's Spent. so beautiful. <laughs> we tried to do it with music. It didn't work out we so well. We tried to do it with music. We tried to do it with... It didn't work either. <laughs> <laughs> Did not work. What about... what? There's another Grampy Perkins one, too. I don't know if it was... That was the one Stephen said he heard before. Mm, was it? Uh, yeah, I heard another one. Was. Confederated Fuels. Yes. Well, we were going to do the Epsom salt. But, uh, oh, that's right. Oh, this is the one. Oh, well, that's Confederated Twine. What the heck? Whatever. If he's heard it, isn't. Oh, it's okay. Girl snag and tear for another fine Grammy Boykins product. Confederated fuel and bait show. Play to the show. stations are you singing the blues. People with clean fingernails and matching socks thinking they better than you. Well, visit Grammy Boykins Confederated Fuel, where I assure you, you'll never pay extra for fancy. It's barely what you need and nothing more. <laughs> this girl snag and go on now. Get yourself <laughs> God, this was the day when we were... <laughs> this was the time when we would spend hours and hours and yes. hours writing, getting think voice and we thought cut. We think now we spend a lot of time. Oh, we spent a lot of time back then. Had one every week. And first we were very obsessed. I, well, I was very obsessed with, it's got to be 30 seconds. It's got to be like a real commercial. We can't... And we gave up on that. And we had our... Confederated bailing twine that ran mm -hmm. minute twenty, and which was awesome. Fuck that! <laughs> yeah, that's seriously good. Got a kiss from my daddy. And he did just for Bowman, Knox County. What's the? I forget how velocity. It was that. Velocity ocelot. Oh, I did this one. I did it. Rich did the voice. Do you hear that? It's the alluring purr of a powerful engine in perfect tune. Now you too can keep your automobile running its best with the cleaning power of one of America's best loved indigenous big cats, the Ocelot. The Ocelot Fuel Conditioner and Engine Cleaner is a specially blended pet pending abrasive crystalline compound that gives away harmful deposits and carbon buildup like a fistful of gravel, keeping your engines in it squeak clean and out of hand selected gallstones from the soon to be endangered Ocelot. Just throw a pouch full in your fuel tank at every fill up. You couldn't do a better job crashing at it with a claw hammer. Make the clean power of the ocelot a regular part of your daily commute. Remember, it comes in a pouch, just like fine chewing tobacco. That's the ocelot fuel conditioner and engine cleaner. The yow! Now that's the sound of clean. You know what? I just ran across the season one recap. I don't remember. I don't even remember what we did for well, that. Well, that was the when everybody, when Bowman got killed with Eric. And... Previously on Roundabout Show. Autocross superstar and bluegrass musical legend Craig Cole. <laughs> That's and right. Then the <laughs> there, we used it again. Well, we've never seen a whole line of Portageons taken out by a focus before. Although the parking lot looks 
like the river say. The dentist says it's over. I'll never autocross <coughs> again. The one foot will never go back. The other one is gone forever. It's not all lost. <laughs> this has been passed down in my family for generations. It's just a microphone with a mustard stain on the side. It's not just any microphone. I remember that. What's that symbol? Looks like the ancients <laughs> called it the low underbound. I went to journalism school, and I'm not sure that's how the symbol's pronounced. Craig, you are the chosen podcaster. You will gather five of the most heralded auto bloggers whose schedules permit recording. I'm Eric Ricko. I'm Michelle Naranjo. I'm Jeffrey Ross. I'm Zach Bowman. I'm Michael Bowman. <laughs> what? You will gather four of the most heralded auto Forgot about that. And so, they will let this journey begin. For you people, I had to wash my chair wash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find the perfect Keith Comanche. You'll see. Well, I'll see. What? I'm going to post this on Facebook. Super cool. But if Jeff's not Henry's father, then that means... You're not the only one to flew poop, Dad. Dad? Meow. Is it raining underneath me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll rendezvous at midnight. I'll have the t-shirts hidden under the ranger. Mountain! <laughs> Mountain! Game over, man. Game over. I fell to bed now. I fell to bed now. Oh, it's, it's so clear through. Gosh, <laughs> our friend's gone to war. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got bad news. It's Zach. He has terminal. <laughs> God damn it, Eric. What? <laughs> face your greatest challenge. Craig, let your spirit animal guide you. My Navajo senses are tingling. Is that a portage on? We only have a 30% chance of success. And if my math is right, we have a 90% chance of failure. That's a whole lot of percents, Craig. <laughs> an excuse to do Into that. the breach! And now the exciting conclusion. Is it raining underneath? <laughs> 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 Mountain! 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 Mountain!